imagine a reaction where A plus B gives you C plus D. Now this reaction therefore tells us that when one molecule of A, one particle of A, reacts with one particle of B, we'll produce one particle of C and one particle molecule of D. So it's a one to one to one to one reaction. But what does this actually mean? Well if we were to think about what actually is happening in this reaction, we don't start with these, we start with these two here, with A and B. So initially we have we just simplify it by saying we have a particle of A. That could represent an atom or could represent a molecule. All depends what A actually is. And then, of course, we have B. Again, a particle could be a molecule, could be an atom. Now, what will happen is, when this reaction takes place, these two things will collide. They will come together, and there will be a point in the middle where they will collide. It's at this point here that one of two things will happen. There will be a reaction or there will be no reaction and instead they will just carry on as before. In the first instance A and B will come together, the reaction will take place and C and D will be produced of which A and B will no longer exist. In the second one, in the second case of no reaction, we will just get A and B coming together, they will bounce off each other, there will be no reaction. Now how fast this happens is known as the rate of a reaction, and that's just the same as a speed. So just as we might say that if a runner completes 100 metres in 10 seconds that they are a fast runner, their speed is great, their speed is high, a reaction that finishes quickly also has a high rate of reaction its speed is also high. But how can we change this rate of reaction? Because that's quite an important thing, particularly if we are um, carrying an industrial process where we know a reaction and we want it to go fast so that we can produce more of C and D, for example. How can we increase the rate of this reaction, the speed that it goes? So these four things are factors which will change the rate of a reaction. Increasing the temperature, increasing the concentration, increasing the surface area or just adding a catalyst. Now the reason they do that is because they affect something called the activation energy. And whilst actually they, do not, they don't necessarily affect it directly, they will have an effect on the particles which ultimately means that there will be some sort of a change relating to this. So if we have a look at temperature. Now back to A and B are particles that were moving around and colliding. Now let's imagine that A and B are both gases. So A and B are within their container, they're moving around, and they randomly have just hit each other, they have collided. Now, if they do that with enough force so that the collision meets the activation energy, so this acts as like a, um, a barrier for the reaction. If this collision has enough energy so that it meets the activation energy, they are going to successfully react. And we will produce, in the case of this, we'll produce C and D, or whatever else we'll get. If when these collide, they do not have the required activation energy, there will be no reaction, and they will just bounce off and move and, and collide again with others. So when we increase the temperature, what we do is we increase the kinetic energy of these particles, they move quicker. Because they are moving quicker within this their box, their container, they are more likely to collide. The collisions will be more frequent. The other thing is that because they are moving faster, every time they collide, because of the greater speed, the collision is harder. Because the reaction at the greater speed is harder, it's more likely to meet this activation energy. Therefore the reaction is more likely to be successful. Therefore, we increase the rate of the reaction. Okay, so we increase the concentration. Now in this case, we could be increasing both A and B, or just A or just B, but whatever happens, we have to change the amount of the reactants. What we will find is that if we increase the amount of A and B, for example, we aren't giving them more energy. 
we're not making them move any faster and we're not making them collide any faster or harder. But what we are doing is we are putting more in A and B together. That means that we will get more collisions occurring. Now statistically, that means out of those collisions, it's more likely that the collisions that occur or more of those collisions will be successful just based on statistics. We are not actually giving any more energy into this reaction. Surface error. If we increase the surface error, and this is something that people often don't understand. So imagine you have a giant piece of fruit. And imagine around that piece of fruit, 40 people can eat it. Obviously imagine a big sphere. 40 people can sit around this and they can eat it. Because no more can eat because no more can fit around it. Now imagine that I was to cut this piece of fruit in half. I haven't taken any fruit away, all I've done is cut it in half, so I still have the same amount of fruit here. But now I have this whole inside edge, which someone can now eat. So I might add another 20 people by doing this. And I can do the same again. I can cut it in half. I've still got the same amount of fruit, but now more people can reach these, these edges. Because if you think about it, at the start, the only bits that could be eaten were the very, very edges. The very centre couldn't be eaten. But by cutting into smaller pieces, we've allowed more surface to be exposed. And in case of chemicals, this could be versus a big lump of calcium carbonate, or a big lump of A even, versus little tiny bits of A, or powdered A, which has a much greater surface area. What's important though is the comparison is made to the same mass. So, 10 grams of big bits versus... 10 grams of powder but it must be the same each time so what happens then is that by increasing the surface area what we do is we increase the surfaces for reaction to take place on so the greater the number of surfaces the greater the number of exposed particles the greater again similar to concentration the greater the number of collisions therefore statistically it's more likely that there will be more successful collisions and therefore the rate of reaction will increase. The final one is a catalyst. Now a catalyst works by actually decreasing the activation energy and it's the only factor that actually directly affects the activation energy. It decreases it. That means that when the particles collide even if they prior to the catalyst had not enough energy to, to react. Now that we've added the catalyst and reduced the activation energy, they may now have enough energy to react. And that therefore means that the rate of reaction again increases. So what it means is that particles that had less energy are now possibly able to react, provided they, ha they meet the new lower activation energy requirements. Now I have an analogy to get to explain all this if you find some of these ideas a bit difficult. Imagine you go to the cinema, and imagine to get into the cinema, it costs you £7. Now, if you go to the cinema with £4, you are not going to get in. And that's now, the analogy part of this is that us going to the cinema and getting into the cinema is the successful reaction. Us being turned away is an unsuccessful reaction. So I don't have enough energy in this case money and so I get turned away no collision and so I get turned away no reaction now with the temperature increasing the temperature is like giving someone more money so I had four pound I've now got eight pound and now when I go to the cinema I go to the desk which is the the collision point if you like I go to the desk where the collision is seven pound well I have eight I have met the requirements for entering the cinema. I have therefore I've met the activation energy. I have enough energy, enough money, and I can go in. There is a successful reaction. Well, how does this apply to concentration? Well, let's imagine now there's only one person. Statistically, this one person comes in with six pounds. That person can't get in. Now imagine actually we had a hundred people each with varying amounts of money it's likely if we were to just bring in a hundred people into a cinema that actually a few of those people would have the required amount of money the seven pound there would be people that didn't have it 
but versus our just one or maybe even two people we now have more people that have the required seven pound for entry so we haven't given them any more money or changed the price all we've done is brought more people in from outside they go to the desk they may or may not have enough the right amount of money but because there are just more of them statistically we will get more people into the cinema surface area the best way I can think to describe this one in the terms of this analogy of the cinema is imagine a family going to the cinema now each one of these family members has the required seven pounds and there are six people in this family and the family like a bird's eye view of this family there's our six they go to the desk and they pay one by one by one by one by one by one by one and it takes them five minutes to pay now imagine if actually there were a few different desks on here and each one of these people went to the desk at the same time they would get through in a much much quicker time okay so the, what we're doing is we're breaking this what is the is the we're breaking the family up the the bigger lump here of the family we are separating and we are letting each one of these have a collision in letting each one of these go to the desk one by one and again they might get turned away because they don't have enough energy or they might be successful finally our catalyst so the way a catalyst works this is actually the easiest one in terms of the cinema analogy our catalyst works by reducing the price of a ticket so whereas the ticket was seven pound before, we now have four pound. So if a person who went in before, who had six pound, got turned away, their collision was unsuccessful. Now when they go, they have the required amount, they have the required energy, therefore it will be successful. They will get into the cinema. And there you have it. A video that hopefully explains rates of reaction and how to change them as per the AQA certificate in chemistry and IGCSE course. Cheers.